Hi, I'm Nate. I own Black Ops Paintball and Airsoft. One of the most common questions I get asked is, how do I start my own paintball park? Most people assume that starting a recreational business like a paintball park is fun, simple, and cheap. I can tell you that it's been a lot of fun. It's hard to keep it simple, and it's way more expensive than I thought it would be. So you want to open a paintball park. The first decision you will have to make is to choose a go big strategy or a start small strategy. If your bank account or credit allows, a go big approach will offer an immediate wow factor, help you attain word of mouth buzz, and customer critical mass. You will also benefit from economies of scale, which is buying bulk all at once gets you a discount. The drawback of this strategy is that it maximizes your exposure or risk. The conservative start small approach minimizes risk and allows growth to be funded at least in part by steady success over time. The drawback to this approach is that it can cost more in the long run to build slowly over time. This is called diseconomies of scale. Some examples are drawn out equipment rentals with repeated delivery fees, drawn out construction costs for additions and remodels, and potential lost opportunities like securing more contiguous property when you grow to need more space. It also will require management of expectations like pardon or dust signs while you're expanding over time, getting more people to play on fewer fields until you can build more, hyping customers about upcoming expansions, explaining why you have porta potties and not plushable toilets yet, etc. Now that you have decided on a strategy, you can choose your location. Land. Will you own or rent? A lease can be cheaper, but you should protect yourself with an option to buy. Leasing versus owning may also determine how much capital you are willing to invest in improvements, such as roads, parking, landscaping, or permanent structures and buildings. How much land do you need? If you are going to only do paintball, no dedicated airsoft fields, you will need roughly 10 acres minimum to have enough room for parking, staging, and play fields. The shape and topography of your property will affect the acreage needed. Think seasonal weather and demand. If your peak season is also the time when half your property is submerged underwater, you will need more property than if those factors are reversed. Where? Location, location, location. If you build a park in the middle of nowhere, you will have to spend much more advertising dollars to let people know where you are. For example, our park in Fayetteville, North Carolina is off a two-lane road with maybe 2,000 people a day driving by, as opposed to our Myrtle Beach property, which is smaller, but off a highway with 70,000 plus cars driving by every day. In Myrtle Beach, we have one billboard. In North Carolina, in Cumberland County and surrounding areas, we have a total of six billboards. So you may get cheaper property, but have to spend more on advertising to get the volume of customers. Factors you need to consider when choosing your location are zoning requirements, nearby population density, weather availability of utilities, including power, water, sewer, internet access. If they're not readily available close by, figure your costs in getting them to the property. Uh, and last but not least, the proximity of your property to other parks and attractions. We at Black Ops Fayetteville have over 4,000 square foot of indoor customer staging space. In Myrtle Beach, we have a 50 foot pavilion with fans, picnic tables on gravel. Um, we also have some shaded tables and spool areas for outdoor staging. So in one case, we have a large, um, fairly expensive building in Myrtle Beach. We have um, a much less expensive pavilion area. It's got a different vibe and feel. So that's two different options you can go to depending on your price and how much you want to invest in buildings right off the bat. Also a factor is if you're going to be leasing your property, you most likely don't want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a building, um, which brings us to a pro shop. If you're planning on doing a pro shop, um, usually you're going to have a hard time doing that with a portable structure and the cost on a national average of a uh, steel building retail space is about $100 a square foot for finished retail uh, square footage. 
a lot of money to sink into somebody else's property unless you have a really good long-term lease with a lot of legal protections. All right, bathrooms. Not the sexiest thing at a paintball park, but something you should consider. Um, flushable toilets are a big bonus over porta potties for the go big strategy. Commercial bathrooms will cost between forty and hundred thousand dollars, depending on size and local business codes. I had to build a split face block bathroom in Myrtle Beach because of the Highway 707 overlay that had quite a bit of um, detailed landscaping requirements and restrictive building material um, codes and uses. So that bathroom actually cost a lot closer to the $100,000 mark. Paved parking lot can cost between $0.90 cents and $2.50 a square foot. Uh, 10,000 square feet fits about 30 cars. So you'd be looking at about $12,000 um, for a 30 car parking lot if you had a paving company do that work for you. Uh, gravel lot costs about $0.25 cents to $0.75 cents a square foot depending on how much grading work and fill or base is needed. A recycled crushed concrete, ABC, crush and run, or ground asphalt um, can save you big bucks, especially if you own or rent equipment like a bobcat. That's usually sufficient to do uh, parking lot grading. Mowed grass works good for overflow parking um, or event parking. Uh, depending on weather, obviously, so you want to have overflow parking, you know, on a nice sunny day, you, you can you can park people on the grass. Um, our park's parking lots cost about $40,000 for the gravel lot in Fayetteville, and uh, the Myrtle Beach cost about $12,000 just because of the materials we were able to source locally. We got a great deal on crushed asphalt in Myrtle Beach. Um, if that was standard rock at $500 a load, we would have spent uh, more like 50,000 and we did all the work in-house so I mentioned parking lots it's kind of boring so our bathrooms but it's a, it's a huge part of your costs and depending on your zoning rules uh, you may not be able to to avert those costs so something important to think about let's talk target demographics who are your customers going to be you can try to hit all the demographics at once with the go big strategy if you have the money, or you can stick with one and then add um, as you go. So the four main customer groups are Speedball, Woodsball, Airsoft, and Parties. The Speedball is probably the most expensive category. You're looking at between $10,000 and $80,000 roughly to build a Speedball field from scratch. Bunkers are around six, $7,000. If you decide to go with turf, you're looking at twenty to forty thousand dollars for turf. Uh, not to mention the equipment, prep work, uh, fill, if needed to put it in. Um, we always set our own poles, uh, cable, and netting ourselves. If you pay somebody else to do that, it can be fairly expensive. The netting itself, you're looking at twelve hundred to two thousand dollars a section. A section is usually about three hundred feet long. So the speedball can be fairly expensive, but even though you usually give them more of a discount, they do shoot more paint. So you got some economies of scale working for you there. Woods ball fields uh, have a wide range from ten to a hundred thousand dollars per field, depending on the quality and size, uh, the bunkers. If you have to net the entire area or just part of it, uh, woods ball is a critical element to any paintball field. That's one you you pretty much have to do. Uh, Airsoft is, is a great money maker. Um, they can use predominantly the same woods ball fields that the paintballers use, although they don't usually like to get uh, paint on their gear. So it, it is a nice option if you can have completely separated, dedicated airsoft fields. It is a growing market. Um, I would say Black Ops does probably close to half of our business is airsoft. So don't write that off if you're not um, if you're not first in it, if you're not familiar with it, look in, into that as a possibility for your business. And then the parties are, are a great way to get new business, but they are a little higher maintenance. You're going to have to have higher trained staff and give them a little more special attention since you typically have younger kids and kids who've never played paintball before. You can get an air system 
for about eight to $12,000. New Vera is probably the best way to go for a quality air system. Bowers are great, but they're a little bit more expensive. Our air system in Fayetteville is over $20,000. So they're not cheap, but you also don't want to get something that's tiny and not going to be able to keep up with 10 or 12 people trying to fill at once. I tried to do that when I first started um, I just just a speedball field on my property and quickly realized that a, a really cheap $4,000 compressor uh, took almost five minutes to fill a 3,048 cubic inch tank and that wasn't going to work at all. So spent all night filling up bolt tanks and uh, it just doesn't work. So make sure you get a good enough air system. Uh, then obviously rentals. Uh, rentals you can get for $100 to $150. I would, would advise getting good quality rentals, otherwise you're going to be replacing and maintaining them constantly. Uh, so for that 100 to 150 bucks, you're looking for a gun, a tank, and a mask for a basic rental. Uh, most people use the Tipman 98 or FT12. Um, that's a great way to go. That's what we use. They're very easy to maintain and they're pretty much bulletproof. Furniture and fixtures, obviously picnic tables, uh, desks, uh, your sales counter, Glass cases, if you're going to do a pro shop, grid wall, all that stuff, you're looking at anywhere from a couple thousand dollars if you do it yourself and get used equipment to forty, fifty thousand dollars to get new, uh, really nice stuff. I mean, you can you can get picnic tables that are steel hot dipped for four hundred to twelve hundred dollars, or you can do like we do and just build them yourself for about one hundred and twenty dollars in materials. Uh, bunkers, field props, netting, poles, etc. Uh, you're going to need power equipment, a mower, a skid stir, brush cutter, auger if you're going to set your own posts that you can lease or you can um, you can purchase that stuff but uh, usually the payments on those can be pretty expensive. Some of them will do interest free. Uh, Caterpillar does. That's what we have is a, is a Caterpillar a 299D. Those run for about $95,000. But it's nice to have something with forks heavy enough to uh, unload pallets of paint off of a, a truck. So that's something to think about as well. Uh, you'll appreciate a, a forklift if it's pouring down rain and you have to uh, unload a truck and get it in a building quickly. Keep this up! Make it through till dawn! We might get out of here! <laughs> if you're gonna do a pro shop, uh, we usually stop between $150,000 to $250,000 worth of gear in our uh, larger pro shops. So that's a quite a big capital investment to get started. And then your point of sale, um, you can start out uh, fairly inexpensively if you use PayPal. Clover is another one that's fairly inexpensive and um, you can always do just cash to start out or you can get NCR Silver or Bank of America system that's a little more in, involved with inventory management. Those are going to be a couple hundred dollars a month for the subscription. Um, obviously insurance that can range just depend on what state you're in. So planning the grand opening, your biggest challenge once you build your park is going to be uh, getting critical mass so you have enough players coming out during your open hours where you're not just getting a steady stream of people coming disappointed with the turnout and then leaving and then more people coming and leaving um, so a lot of people start out they do uh, Groupon, Living Social, um, other forms of advertising it can be very expensive initially so you're gonna have to plan to spend most if not all of your profit on advertising to try to gain that critical mass. Deals are great if you work with local companies a lot of times you can give them half off coupons and they'll look at that as a thing of value to hand out to their staff and customers so that can help you grab, grab that critical mass because nobody wants to play paintball by themselves obviously. Radio, billboards, social media are important um, ways of advertising. There's a, a million ways out there just plan on uh, quite a large um, advertising budget usually a thousand to three thousand dollars a month um, I would say to get started uh, and then your website don't skip on your website it's your it's your brand it's what people see before they get there uh, plan on spending five to twelve thousand dollars on your website development and promoting um, a really good website so how much money does it take I took a poll of ten existing field owners from across the United States with parks that cost a million dollars or less to open 
and the average that they gave me that they thought it would take to start a part today was about $500,000. So to recap, this is not a comprehensive list of everything you'll need to consider, but hopefully it covers most of the major factors you'll encounter and gives you an idea of the scale of building your own paintball park. My advice to you is, number one, count the cost. Don't likely make a decision that will change the way you live your life for many years. Uh, when I started my paintball park in 2012, I had no idea how much it would affect my life. Now I pretty much eat, sleep, and breathe paintball and airsoft. That's what I do, it's what I dream about, it's what I think about first thing in the morning. I had no idea, I thought it was gonna be something I could just pass on to managers and they would run the park for me. Um, that's That may be true of other businesses like manufacturing, it's not, not true of recreation, it's definitely not true of paintball and airsoft. So if this is something that you really wanna be a major part of your life and you enjoy it, and this may be for you, but if not, definitely don't do it. Get advice from people who've been there and done that. Uh, you can ask advice from the smartest people in the world, but if they're not in this industry that you're looking at, their advice really isn't going to necessarily overlap. So, so try to find people that are doing exactly what you want to try to do and let them tell you what they did wrong so you don't make the same mistakes. Um, that's called leapfrogging. It's a, it's a great way to uh, save some money and hopefully use other people's mistakes for your benefit so you don't have to go through the pain of, of making them. Have access to reserve capital. Typically a new business takes three to five years to turn a profit, so don't expect your new park to start putting money in your pocket right away. In fact, be prepared to invest more money than it brings in for the first four years, especially if you chose the strategy of starting small. You're gonna really have to continue to build your business and put money into it, not just as a maintenance stuff, but you're gonna to wanna to continually improve at a pretty rapid pace so people can see the new fields, the new fixtures, the new bathrooms, everything you're doing to make it better. Um, that's really your best advertising. So plan for delays. So in Myrtle Beach, due to engineering delays, we were about five months behind schedule when we finally got our CO. So that was five months of payments and no revenue that we weren't accounting for um, because the engineers ran five months behind. So be ready for that. You need to have reserve capital for unforeseen circumstances so that you don't get uh, sunk before you even start. And trying to get capital uh, when you don't have it and you're desperate can be very, very expensive. So, so plan for the worst and expect hiccups unique to your environment, whether those would be legal, civil, competition, road closures, repairs, all those kind of things. Those are some of those things we've experienced um, that you just never think would really affect your business and then they close an exit and put a new bridge in and for six months you know you're getting phone calls constantly saying I can't get to your location. Make a real business plan and vet it. Take it to a bank or an investor and if whether or not you need the money and if they say yeah I'll write you a check then you're probably on the right track. If you decide to go forward uh, and build your own paintball park, I wish you the best and um, good luck. Thanks for listening. Improvements like road. <laughs> Roads. <laughs>